In this video, we're going to take a look at working with Motion Blur in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the Space Limo O2.MA scene. So Motion Blur in Octane for Maya has been greatly simplified. It's very easy to use and calculates very quickly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Render Settings window. And you'll find the Motion Blur settings are all contained in this Motion Blur rollout here below the Render Settings. And there's just a few settings to worry about. Let's take a look at the render view. I'm going to go to Rendering Editors, Render View. You can see here's a render of the current frame of the animation. The animation is very simply just a spaceship flying by, and then we have a rotating bit right here. So if I go into the render view, And I'll choose render, snapshot, camera one. And I'll do a quick IPR render. So you can see that's the uh, image without motion blur. So if I go into the render settings and I start to increase the shutter time, we'll start to see some blurring. You can especially see it on the fins here. Let's bring it way up here. And we might have to force it to refresh here. So let's hit IPR again. There we go. So now we're seeing some motion blur. So if I decrease this, we'll see less blurring. And if I increase it, we'll see more blurring. And then you can use the subframe settings to fine tune the motion blur, the amount of the motion blur, as well as the quality. And then we have shutter alignment, which refers to at what point is the motion blur calculated? If the current frame is the point where the shutter is completely open, then the symmetric setting means that blurring happens both before and after the current frame. So in other words, if I have it open for a long time, then you know a few frames before frame 22, we're gonna get some blurring, and then a few frames after 22, we're gonna get some blurring, because that simulates the shutter of the camera opening reaching full exposure and then closing again. So if I set shutter alignment to after, then that means the motion blur is gonna happen after the current frame. And then before is the opposite. So motion blur is calculated for the motion before the current frame. And if you take a look here, I also have another camera in here that's animated. So if I switch to camera two, I have an animation where the camera just go, zooms in and rotates a little bit as it's zooming in. So if I move to this point in the animation, let's do another render. I'll choose render, snapshot, camera two, do IPR render. And you can see that the camera motion is blurred on this object right here as we pass by it. So if I bring this down to a lower level, we just get a little bit of blurring there. And you can see it's nice and fast and looks very good. So that's the basics of working with motion blur in Octane for Maya.